Greetings everyone. Um, another rant. Um, this time it's a proper good one. Um, I'm going to focus ex explicitly on one company and one company alone this week. Um, anybody who's watched my re video reviews knows my opinions or might have an idea of my opinions of this game company. But this week they've really hit an all-time low in my opinion. Um, I'm of course talking about EA. Now there may be some expletives here. And do you know what? They, they bloody well deserve them. Um, EA has been a complete and utter farce for the best part of five years as far as I'm concerned as a game company. They have taken small studios which had nice little properties and within three years they hammer them into the ground. Well, not even that. For example, take Pandemic. They made a wonderful game called The Saboteur. I don't know if anybody ever played that. Well, they ran them into the ground. Bioware. They've completely, pretty much polluted Bioware with their ethos. Um, they did a lacklustre um, launch of the Old Republic, the, the MMO game. And um, in general, um, they have had a very negative effect on the quality of Bioware games, in my opinion. But the thing I want to talk about here is Dead Space 3. Now, I had only a sort of mild interest in the game, I must admit. I took one look at it and I thought, why are you putting co-op into a survival horror game? I've got the first Dead Space, I love it. And I love it for that reason. It was quite unique when it first came out. And what they have done, like they do with all their franchises, is make it homogenised and make it into something which is even more marketable rather than look at the game as a piece of art. Now I'm sure that the studio that's making Dead Space 3 has no choice but to go down the route of what EA tells them to do. That's fine. We know that they, they strong arm publishers most of the time into putting these things in. But the thing that really brought my piss to a ball this week was two things. First of all, the one of the one of the members of the team uh, behind the game started talking about the PC version and basically said we're not doing anything special so there you go they are going to pretty much give you extra resolution and that's it no DirectX 11 support none of the things that would make that game so much better like having global illumination or any type of any type of atmospheric effect that's not available on the consoles no nope, you're not getting any of that um, Instead, he said, we are allowing you to use a mouse and keyboard, as if that's a selling point. What they are basically admitting to is they don't give a shit about PC gamers. They honestly think that, well, if you've ever used Origin, you know that they don't trust us for a start with their uh, blessed properties. Um, they, <laughs> Everything is digitally locked. Everything is, you know... <clears throat> Think about some of their older games. They don't provide um, server support anymore for some of these things. Like Mercenaries. Uh, Mercenaries 2, servers. You can't go online with those. Gone. Um, but just the general level of disdain of this gentleman, who I can't remember his name. Um, I don't want to remember his name making the asinine comments he made. Clearly they don't think of much of the PC as a platform other than just a subsidiary for making money. Rather than make their game better, rather than show off what they can do with their level of artistry and their various programming skills, no, we don't want any of that. That costs money. Yeah, the way they they are saying out, out and out, for example, Crisis Free, we're not going to port it to Wii U. Why? Because there's not a big enough demographic. Not because there might be fans. Not because they, you know it might be a worthwhile thing to do in the long run. No, won't do it. Um, and the second thing um, which I want to bring up as far as Dead Space 3 is concerned is this ludicrous article I read today on Eurogamer that there will be 11, count that, 11 pieces of DLC at the fucking launch of this game. 11. Now day one DLC as far as I'm concerned is a bloody crime anyway. It shows that there was a deliberate excluding of the content from the game from the outset but they, they are thinking more rather than doing what say Bethesda do 
and release um, an expansion that adds a totally different layer to the game, adds even more um, value to the game, extends the life of the game. I mean, think about it, people are still talking about Skyrim, even though it, re it was released ages ago. And that's the purpose of DLC. It's really a, often a love letter to the customer, at the same time it's lucrative. I'm sure that Bethesda make a hell of a lot of money on their DLC. But anyway, 11 pieces of DLC. And these, these pieces of DLC are basically game enhancing. You are getting a very different game if you don't buy this shit. It's all these stupid upgrades like bot capacity and uh, bot personality packs, whatever that is. Sharpshooter packs. These things that give you an advantage within the game. I, 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 I'm absolutely at loss. I mean, some of this stuff is about £3.50 a pop. And I know I mentioned in my Dragon Age review that they were selling this stuff within the game. And you know, you know that they're going to be promoting it within the game. You're not going to be able to get away from it. You're not going to get away from the nagging feeling that you have not got the whole game. This practice in general makes me sick to my stomach. It is possibly the worst thing that has come out of this previous console generation. Yeah, I'm looking at the consoles here. Because this is the sort of stuff that comes through Xbox Live Marketplace and things like that. We're, we're used to DLC, but we're used to, we used to be used to DLC adding value to the game. Adding a, 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 a way of extending the game, not this whole Oh right, well we're deliberately going to leave that feature out of the main game and put it in DLC. I'm wondering how much of this stuff is actually on the disc. I mean, many of us won't be buying the disc. We'll be buying um, something like uh, uh, off of Steam or good old uh, good old games if it's on that. Or oh, actually no, it won't be on any of them. It'll probably be directly through Origin and Origin alone. Um, now Origin, I haven't got a problem with, but I'm only willing to go through these hoops of um, digital rights management if there's something in it for me at the end of it I'm getting a better experience I'm getting a good game and what they've done to this franchise the Dead Space franchise is what they've done to everything else they're running it into the ground for the sole purpose of milking every single last pound out of it they've taken a game which had a very high level of, of game design and artistry and turning it into a fucking squad based shooter. Don't be under any illusions. Alright, I haven't played the game but look at the footage. Does that look like Dead Space to you? Even remotely? It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm all for adding new elements to games but when you're d doing something like this, I mean look at Medal of Honor. It's, it's the granddaddy of all FPS shooters, at least on the consoles. And they said this week they're taking it out of commission because of poor sales on the last game. The last game was a, a, a Modern Warfare clone like the game before it. What did they expect? Pe rather than stick to what they were good at and stick to something which made Medal of Honor Medal of Honor. No, they scooped the blood it. Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I used to love Medal of Honor games. I really did. Um, Medal of Honor games were great back in the day. I still have fond memories of playing Medal of Honor um, Frontline for the first time on, I think it was PS2 or something, my, my housemate had it. But, um, you know, the, the last modern, uh, uh, modern Warfare clone they came out with, it wasn't Medal of Honor. It was, it was utter dog shit and they blame the franchise. They blame the franchise rather than their own greedy decisions. Uh, it's just, it's got to, uh, I mean, this has got to stop. I am boycotting every e -game, EA game from now on. I, until they actually produce something of decent enough value that would get me interested in purchasing one of their products again, I am not going to, I'm not going to budge on it. No way. Fuck Crisis 3. I mean, you're watching Crisis 2 right now, and for anybody who wants to know the specs in it, I'm running it on a 675M on my laptop. I can get about 50 frames a second at 720p, around the, the, the 
late 20s, early 30s at 1080p on Ultra. Anyway, regardless of that, I'm not the biggest fan of these Crisis games. I really am not. Take away the eye candy and you have got a competent shooter at best. I don't find the story that interesting. Um, I think the cry, the cry engine, yeah, all right. It's it's quite a good engine, but I think it's very overrated in what it can do. Um, So-called HD texture packs on um, this game, well, they don't look that great in my opinion, even at 1080p. Um, and let's not forget, none of that stuff launched with the game because they had to rush the game out for consoles. So we didn't get the DirectX 11 support as promised at launch. We didn't get the HD textures. We had to wait for them. By that time, many people would finish the game and thought, sod it. I'm not going to go through it again. Um, but just the, the problem with this company is they have got this stranglehold on a number of monopolies. These sports games, which a lot of people not knowing any better, go out and buy every year. That most of the time, apart from say some recent editions of FIFA and and and, and John Madden, where they've added a few new gameplay elements, they needed to do that, by the way, because of what I'm about to say. They often just reskin it. It's just a reskinned version of the previous game with very little enhancement and very little effort going into the production of these games, and they make a killing every single time. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of their sports games. Normally I can give two shits about sports games, and I certainly can't give two shits about sports games from EA. Again, the annoying passes and all that kind of stuff. And for all those smug people on uh, consoles who think, well, you know, this is just a PC gamer ranting, trust me, you've got some shit coming your way with the next generation of consoles. I am sure that they are going to try and, you know, force in Origin support into the next consoles like even more than they're doing now I remember you know buying uh, I think it was Dragon Age on the on the the Xbox and I thought why the hell do I need to sign into an EA server when I'm play paying for Xbox Live well that's the kind of shit that they like to pull and this company is not making nothing more than generic shooters now they've got Fuse, they've got Dead Space 3 and they've got Army of Two all co-op based shooters of one string or another and they're all coming out within a few months or so. Well, EA are going to be in for a real real wake up call I think this year. They have pissed off far too many people. They have pissed off definitely the, the PC gamers patience has run to its absolute, you know, it's, it's now down to the bare minimum. They crucified one of the best gaming franchises of this generation, Mass Effect, and they turned it into a complete farce. Never mind the ending. The biggest outrage for me with Mass Effect 3 was From the Ashes DLC. That was day one DLC, which had such an important character, which was a sodden, uh, you know, it just... It, it, it blows my mind how different that game is with that character in it. For those of you who haven't played it, I'm not going to say who the character is, but it's quite pivotal, pivot, pivotal to the understanding of Mass Effect 3 and the so-called themes that it's going after. But again, I mean, you look what they did to characters like Ashley in that game. I swear they increased her cup size by... God knows how much, and just turned her into more of a sort of sex object. Um, it, the the gameplay became very boring. It became repetitive. It felt more like a shooter than an RPG. You go back and play the original Mass Effect, the one which wasn't corrupted by EA. It is a wonderful game. Mass Effect 2, thankfully as well, it was uh, they were only purchased by EA just when, as the game was shipping. But again, the Cerberus network and shoehorning all that shit into it. They managed to get their wicked way with that. All I'm saying is enough is enough. Um, the, people have got to start voting with their wallets here. Because that is the only thing that EA is interested in. They are not interested in advancing gaming. They are not interested in the art of gaming and turning it into a genre which is respected on the level of movies and TV shows. They are not interested in any of that. 
and they are interested solely in for making profit. Yes, they're a company. I understand they've got to make money. But to do it in such soulless ways as 11 pieces of DLC at launch, it, you know, to me, it's as if they are sending out Dead Space as a franchise to die. They have done, they have done so much with this game to piss its loyal fans off. I will be surprised if its sales are any good. They will, it will still ship, ship a, you know, possibly a million. But for the amount of money they're putting in it, into it, and the advertising campaign, I'm wondering if they're going to recoup their money back. I really am. Um, I mean, Phil fucking Collins on the bloody. I saw the recent trailer for it. Phil Collins, what the? It's dead space. It's supposed to be sort of minimalist. That whole early Ridley Scott sort of vibe of being stuck in the cold of space. It's not supposed to be some sort of... Uh, they just turn it into a flipping Saturday matinee soap. Uh, it's just ludicrous. I'm wondering what you guys think of EA. What do you think of their practices? Will you be picking up Dead Space 3 after all of this? Knowing that you are getting nothing more than just a, a really, really shitty port. It, it, with no bells and whistles. Uh, will you just pick up for the consoles and think, sod it, I'm going to get it on there. Um, will you be joining me in the boycott of EA games? Let's face it, they haven't got a hell of a lot going for them at the moment. You haven't got anything to lose. But... Y if we don't do something, I mean, it, they'll end up, well, they are, even worse than Capcom, in my opinion, with this DLC rubbish. I don't think even Capcom's done 11 pieces of DLC at launch. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the gameplay footage, um, and I've got probably two reviews this week, so stay tuned, and I'll see you soon.